In the 18th century, scientists thought that when things burn, a substance called phlogiston came out of them. Then, experiments in closed vessels where substances could be accurately weighed began to help early scientists, such as Lavoisier, understand that when things burn, oxygen is added. He realized that matter could be changed but not destroyed. In 1789, he established the law of conservation of mass. So did the physicist Erwin Schrödinger. As Schrödinger himself pointed out in a famous article, that there's something really weird about this idea of dividing the world into two parts. Because, you know, you are made out of atoms. So if an atom can be in two places at once, so can you, right? Schrodinger had devised an experiment to expose this absurdity. He came up with the most famous feline experiment in science, Schrodinger's cat. It goes like this. A cat is penned up in a steel chamber, along with a radioactive substance such as uranium, a Geiger counter attached to a quick-release hammer, and a flask of poison gas, hydrocyanic acid. No. Yeah. <laughs> He doesn't even have legs, and now you're going to poison him? Don't blame me. Blame, blame Schrodinger. Schrodinger was never diabolical enough to do this for real. It was just a thought experiment. At the heart of it all is a quantum event. Every now and then, completely randomly, there's a chance of a uranium atom decaying and emitting radiation. This radiation is enough to trigger the counter that sets off the hammer that breaks the vial that poisons the cat. But if none of the uranium atoms decay over the duration of the experiment, the cat will live. What's so disturbing about this is the fate of a single atom, right? Determines the fate of a cat. According to the Copenhagen interpretation, until the experiment is observed by peering inside, the entire contents of the box exist in two possible states. Each uranium atom both has and and still further, the poison and not and this is the paradox. A single cat that is both dead and alive at the same time. That's I, and neither could you. In the winter of 1954, some time after the Bohr lecture, fortified that with Bohr's assistant, Augie Peterson, Hugh came up with the theory of parallel universes. Hugh argued that everything in the universe, big and small, obeys the laws of quantum mechanics. And instead of the observer, Hugh introduced the notion of splitting. Splitting occurs every time a quantum event this is how parallel universes are created. How does my father's theory solve the, the two different outcomes of the cat experiment? It says that both outcomes actually happen. The paradox had been that the one cat was both dead and alive at the same time. Hugh solved the problem with parallel universes, two cats existing in separate worlds, one cat dead, the other alive. Hugh's bold theory was backed up by some serious math. He was only 24 years old.